This is a case of Martha Wise, an American poisoner and serial killer. Martha was born to parents Wilhelm Karl Hazel and Sophia Elizabeth Ank, both farmers, in 1883 in Hardscrabble, Ohio. She also had two brothers and a sister. In 1906, Martha met the much older Albert Wise, also a farmer, at a box social. The two married not long after, even though he never gave her a ring. The marriage was not a happy one. Martha moved to Albert's 50-acre farm, but soon found out he was more interested in having a farmhand than a wife, and found life no less easy or freely as a married woman than when she lived with her parents. Even when she was pregnant, she was forced to do work usually meant for a man, plowing fields, slopping hogs, etc., and still had her usual chores of cleaning and cooking. The couple's first child, Walter Austin, did not survive infancy, but their children Everett, Gertrude, Kenneth, and Lester did. Martha's lone hobby to distract her from her life were funerals. She rarely missed a funeral near hard scrabble, whether she knew the deceased or not. When questioned, she replied she just liked to attend funerals. Albert Wise died unexpectedly in 1922, leaving his 40-year-old widow with four children to raise. After that, her off fascination with funerals became more noticeable, and she not only attended more funerals, but began openly crying and lamenting at them, no matter who had died. Within a year of her husband's death, Martha found a new love interest in the form of Walter Johns, who was a farmhand on the farm next to hers. The relationship was frowned upon by her family. Both her mother and Aunt Lily made no secret of their disapproval and their desire for Martha to end the relationship. By the end of 1924, she gave in and ended the relationship. John's left for Cleveland, and the two lost contact. On Thanksgiving evening, 1924, several family members, including Martha's mother, fell ill with severe stomach pains. The others recovered, but her mother worsened, and she died on December 13, 1924. New Year's Eve brought more illnesses. Her Aunt Lily, her husband Fred, and several of their children became ill, all suffering the same stomach pains as her mother did before she died. Several family members were hospitalized, but Lily and Fred were both dead by February 1925. In total, 17 family members fell ill with the same symptoms in the fall and winter of 1924 and 1925. Four of Lily and Fred's children were left partially paralyzed from the mysterious illness. After the deaths of her aunt and uncle, police began to investigate the unexplained deaths. The county sheriff, Fred Roshan, soon discovered that Martha had signed at a local drugstore for a series of purchases of large quantities of arsenic. An autopsy in Lily's stomach showed traces of arsenic in her digestive tract. When Martha was brought in for questioning, she claimed at first the arsenic was for killing rats, but soon confessed she poisoned her family by pouring it in water buckets and coffee pots the family drank out of. The devil made me do it, she said. He came to me in the kitchen while baking bread. He came to me in the fields. He followed me everywhere. Despite her confession, she pled not guilty to murdering her aunt in front of a grand jury on March 23, 1925. She told the jury of her attraction to attending funerals, 
and that when there were not enough funerals in the community, she was compelled to create more by killing. Martha was indicted of first-degree murder on April 7, 1925. Martha's trial began on May 4, 1925. Her defense claimed she was insane and that her former lover, Walter Johns, told her to do it. A number of setbacks plagued her defense, from the suicide of her sister-in-law, who had planned on testifying on her behalf, to a man named Frank Metzger, who recanted his testimony and on the stand told prosecutors the defense had asked him to perjure himself to support claims that Martha was insane. Martha's son Lester and three of her aunt's children testified against her. After one hour of deliberation, the jury found her guilty of first-degree murder, but begged the judge to show mercy. He sentenced Martha to life imprisonment, with terms she could only be freed by executive clemency. In 1962, as a result of Martha's good behavior, Governor Michael DeSalle commuted her sentence to second-degree murder, and she was paroled at the age of 79. Her remaining family refused to take her in, and neither would any convalescent homes. Within three days, she returned to prison, lacking anywhere else to go. Her parole and commutation were revoked. Martha died in prison on June 28, 1971. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you here next week for True Crime Tuesday.